My government has dismissed claims it is interfering with the regulatory role of the Bank of Ghana following its decision to set up a committee to deal with the challenges confronting some indigenous banks in meeting the new minimum requirement. Now, Deputy Minister of Finance, Kweku Kwati, in an interview with Joy Business, disclosed that moves by government will rather ensure that the financial system is cleaned up. Ebenezer Sabuti has more in this report. The president, a couple of weeks ago, set up a committee to engage with the local banks on measures to help secure the necessary requirement before December 2018. This was after some representatives of indigenous banks called on the president to, among others, consider extending the minimum capital requirements deadline till 2022. However, some analysts have criticized the move by the president, saying it amounts to interference. Government, on its part, says it won't do anything contrary to what the Bank of Ghana regulation states. In an interview with Joy Business, Deputy Minister for Finance, Kweku Kwating, said the action by government is to complement the efforts of a bank in sanitizing the financial system. It is not really for government to be forcing the Bank of Ghana's hand where the Bank of Ghana does not intend to do something. And so government does not take the view that we ought to be overruling the Bank of, the bank of Ghana or that we ought to be even undermining the um, regulatory functions of the Bank of Ghana. What government can do, which we are doing, is to engage with the local banks to ensure that they are not so harshly impacted by these directives of the Bank of Ghana, that we can use various strategies to ensure that they remain within the banking system. That is the focus of the engagement we are having with the indigenous banks right now. He spoke to Joy Business on the sidelines of the official ceremony to rebrand HFC to Republic Bank after the Trinidad financial firm acquired a controlling stake in the bank. Managing Director of HFC, Anthony Jordan, said the new brand will open up the bank's financial portfolio to finance more businesses and investments. This will certainly cause a shift we'd like to think in the minds of the public as we line up fully with our major shareholder, our parent company, Republic Bank, all right? So we know Republic Bank Ghana Limited. That brings a number of benefits to us. Um, we will be perceived in the marketplace as a truly universal bank. Our cost of funding will come down because of the triple B plus rating that we have from Standard & Poor's. Um, it allows us to integrate even more with the systems and procedures and the um, best practices of Republic Bank. And most important, um, we'll see an increase in the services and the products that Republic Bank provides in its other territories. A lot of that will be offered in Ghana and going forward. Republic Bank is optimistic shareholders will approve strategies to raise funds from the stock market to meet the minimum capital requirement before December 2018. Meanwhile, Executive Secretary of the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association, Greda, Sami Amegaibo, says the move by the government is to, to approve the acquisition of HFC by Republic Bank will not have any significant impact on mortgage financing. According to him, the estate developers are in constant talks with the bank and have the assurance that the sector will not be abandoned. He spoke to Joy Business after the official rebranding ceremony of HFC Bank here in Accra. A home is home. I think they want to expand, but their, their uh, foundation business, which is their home financing, will not go away. I'm privileged to have met the MD personally and Paula one-on-one, -on -one, and we have discussed mortgage at length. In fact, we shared ideas on what I think are problems in the industry and some uh, measures that we think we can bring uh, on board to mitigate some of the challenges that the mortgage market is facing. And they sounded very positive, in fact, very enthusiastic, and actually dedicated an officer in their office to me for us to deliberate further, and maybe the officer will present you know, what his findings are to them, and, and we are on it. In fact, I just met the guy right now. And are, are we going to have a situation where now our home financing will not be their first choice. Well, it depends. You see, you can have a portfolio and, and allocate you, you know, your, your, your market share in a particular you know, setting. Now, what is more important is you don't drop what you have always provided for mortgage, but then make possible to include the, the oil and, and all. It's just about maintaining what you have at least and ensuring that at least we don't lose out on that opportunity. And they sound very enthusiastic and I'm sure they will really want to uh, continue to do mortgage financing.
As I stay further in the banking industry and shareholders of Ecobank Transnational Incorporated ETI in Ghana and other parts of Africa would not enjoy dividends for this year. This is the third year running that the bank has not declared dividends. While the previous year might have been as a result of not so good profits, reasons for this year differ. George Biafi has been attending the annual general meeting for the bank and has come through with this report. According to the board chairman, the decision not to declare dividend is critical to ensure that they can indeed plow the profit into the business to meet some regulatory requirements, the various markets that they operate. However, this doesn't go down well with some shareholders who insist that the bank should look at a way to meet them halfway through in terms of the dividend payment. Managing director of the bank, Adia Adeyemi, said that they've come very far in cleaning up their books and putting the bank on a strong footing. The meeting brought together shareholders from other countries in West Africa, including Ghana and even others in other regions in the world. From Lome, Togo, this is George Yafe reporting for Joy Business. Now away from that, some automobile importers uh, say Ghana Revenue Authority's plans to impound uncustomed vehicles, if not properly executed, could scare away their customers. The GRA has announced its intentions to commence special operations to check whether import duties and other taxes have been paid on vehicles already on the roads. Even though the operation has been suspended to further notice, General Manager of uh, the Georgia Motors, Stephen Nana Poku Mensa, has urged the GRA to rather ensure the imported cars do not cross borders illegally into the country. If you move from garage to garages, we, we normally pay our, do, uh, pay our duties and taxes. AMA comes here for their taxes, we pay them, so they normally come and check and go. But coming here with the uh, police and customs, that way, you know, I think it will embarrass most of the people coming here, the customers. They will think uh, that we have packed uh, 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 this type of cars, or Lance's cars, and, uh, which means we haven't paid the duties that we have brought in the cars. But it, it, it wasn't like that. We normally pay our taxes. So if at least once in a while, they will come to the director or general manager and ask, with a few people, automatically the cars are coming from the port. And uh, if you don't pay your tax, do you think you can get the car out? It's impossible. So within the, our boundaries, the borders, they should try and cross-examine the boundaries. Because those cars are coming from that unapproved uh, uh, borders. So the, uh, the migration and the custom officers should check that one. Because if any car will enter, it will be the problem of the custom officer or the migration officer. So they should check that one. By passing through the port, you pass so many houses before the car will get out. So I don't think somebody can dodge without paying tax. Now, still on the marketplace, the Ghana Hotels Association is urging the Tourism Ministry and the Ghana Tourism Authority to consider funding activities of tourism trade associations to enhance the performance of their members in their quest to offer improved services. Newly sworn in president of the association, Dr. Edward Aka Nyameke, says the request for funding will impact positively on tourism development in the country. He was speaking at a ceremony to inaugurate the newly national executive of the Ghana Hotels Association in Kofodia in the Eastern region. The inaugural ceremony was under the theme reducing hotel rates in Ghana, the role of government. It coincided with the association's second national executive council meeting. Various players in the hospitality industry and regulators were present and made contributions on how their operations could be enhanced. Newly sworn in president said his tenure will ensure the building of a resourceful association which will focus on giving more benefits to its members. Key among issues was a call for government to mend some regulations to reduce taxation of its members. The vision is a bold attempt to address in a holistic manner long-standing challenges that continue to plague operators in the hotel industry. These challenges include high utility tariffs, duplication of roads by regulatory bodies, indiscriminate increase in statutory licensing and royalty fees, diminishing occupancy rates, poor sanitation, and lapses in public security. These challenges, Nana Chairman, 
and others not mentioned here are well known and well documented and therefore need no further elaboration. Indeed, Nana Chairman, our strategy moving forward as an association will be a passionate focus on solutions. We shall strive to propose solutions to the challenges facing the industry and advocate for their implementation to the benefit of all. The Tourism Development Fund instituted five years ago is said to have generated over 20 million Ghana cities from the 1% levies collected from trade associations. To enhance performance of trade associations, Dr. Akkad called on the Tourism Ministry to make judicious use of the levy to fund their activities. One of the major challenges that makes such associations ineffective and sometimes seemingly irrelevant is the lack of both human and capital resources. These low human and capital resources can also be traced to subsidiary fees or dues that are generally low because payment is voluntary. Having established a tourism development fund, which major source of funding is a mandatory payment of 1% of inflow by operators in the tourism sector, which also has one of its objectives to empower the private sector to play a meaningful role in tourism development. I believe it is high time that the ministry and GT consider funding activities of the various tourism trade associations particularly those expenses that are administrative in nature, such as staff salaries, transportation, pension station, ICT, and so on. The newly elected executive swore the oath of office administered by the former president of the association, Nana Kofi AJ Trini I, who is also the CEO of Magdik Royal Plaza Hotel. The new president is the immediate past Greater Accra president of the association. He is taking over from Herbert Akka as a national president after a competitive election. Let's now turn our attention to one of our top stories. An indigenous oil marketing company, Goyle, has been selected among other local oil marketing companies to lead in the implementation of the gas and cylinder recirculation program. To this, to this end, Goyle has been mandated to build three gas filling plants in various parts of the country. Addressing shareholders and management of the company at its 49th annual general meeting, chairman of the board of directors, Kwamna Batels, announced that gas filling stations will be built in Tema, Kumasi, and Tamale. Now, Ebenezer Sabuti has been sitting in the meeting and is joining us live on phone now for some more updates. Good afternoon, Ebenezer. And uh, what will go be doing as part of the mandate in this new recirculation policy? Hi, Rafi. As part of this policy, Goyal is also expected to get vehicles, I mean, long trucks, so that they will be distributing the products, that's the filling, uh, the, what, the gas commodity, to consumers. As you all know, last year, government has begun a program to stop consumers from going to the various filling stations to procure the gas as a, I mean, as a measure to minimize the, the accident at the various shops. So, Goyal has been, I mean, appointed or selected to lead in this program. And they will be doing this in conjunction with government. Right, so, which are the other companies aside Goyal? We have not, we have no much information about the other companies right. yet. Uh, right. What we keep hearing from our sources is that there are some other two indigenous companies who are also selected to help go ahead do this because, as we all know, Goyal cannot cover the whole country. All right, so Goyal is going to establish these bottling plants as well as distribute them, or they are only uh, mandated to establish the bottling plants? They are doing both. They will establish plants at various vantage points okay and then they will also have vehicles distributing vehicles as you know consumers will no longer be going to the various stations to purchase the product so go ahead is expected to distribute the product to consumers at various so as I do in the plan, mm -hmm. now when are we going to see these gas filling stations in, in these That's parts of the country tool. Is expected by the end of this year. I spoke with the MD of God, Patrick Akoli, who confirmed to me that yes, we have started the, I mean, preparatory work and the project is expected to start by the end of this year. All right, so you've been sitting in the 49th annual general meeting. Uh, has any dividend uh, been made yet or has it been announced to be paid to shareholders? Yes, the board has announced a dividend payment of 0 0.028 per share 
in all, it amounted to about 11 million to be paid to shareholders. And indeed, shareholders have approved it, even though they argue it is minimal. Because looking at the performance of the company over the years, they as shareholders have contributed enough to its performance, and they expected more. But what the board has approved for them seems minimal. So they were agitating earlier. By the end of the day, they approved the dividend payment of about 11 million Ghana cities. All right. Do you have any information for us further? Other information has to do with the beauty men plant, which got, I mean, disclosed earlier. That was last year that they were going to build that tema. And I spoke with the managing director and then also the board chairman, Kwamna Battles, who did confirmed that they will be beginning the project in less, in a month's time. So they will be casting thought for the project to begin. And it is expected to cost about $35 million. All right, many thanks for your time, Ebenezer Sabuti, uh, reaching us live uh, from the premises of the Surgeon and Physicians College here in Accra, where the 49th Annual General Meeting of Goyal is currently ongoing. Now, turning our attention from that story, industry demands must inform and shape curriculum development in our universities. That's according to the president of the Christian Service University College, Prof Professor Sam Afrani. He tells Joy Business at this year's career fair in Kumasi that this is the only way to bridge the gap between industry and academia. Yes. Data from the Institute of Statistics, Social and Economic Research at the University of Ghana suggests only 10% of graduates find jobs a year after school. A large number of them take up to 10 years to secure employment. Professor Afrane believes the age-old complaint universities are not churning out the right products for industry must be lessened. Industry must inform and shape career development, uh, curriculum development in the universities. The AGI, Association of Ghana Industries, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the professional bodies, must get closer to the investors. Hello. This year's career fair is under the theme promotion of employable skills, the role of universities in Ghana. It brought together business operators to interact with students. Executive Director Rural Enterprise Development, Sam Arthur, encouraged young graduates to take up small scale businesses. He believes they stand a better chance of making it bigger than illiterates. When graduates take up some of these skills training and we have begun to now get some of them now we have programs in graduate uh, skills employment we have graduates who are undertaking skills in uh, agri businesses we have some in uh, beats making some in some agro processing uh, uh, activities and you want to see them I don't think these people will be writing applications to uh, some of these firms on this. They really are producing themselves and they want to grow their businesses. Like the originator of the Facebook, like the other examples that we have undertaken. I believe your study here and the training that you are going to, if you are really conscious of becoming an entrepreneur, you stand a better chance than the person in Kijiji, that person sitting in that kiosk, who can live here and go and begin selling ice water. You will become a better entrepreneur in ice water selling than the one that you see out there. Now, you may either love their music, movies, and their skills in various fields of endeavor, but after they hit retirement age, their stories are nothing to write home about. Now, the question is, why do veteran celebrities find it difficult to maintain good lifestyles after retirement? John Fafali has been finding out more in this report. 
Unfortunately, some Ghanaian celebrities, despite their flash lifestyles, don't sustain this in their old age. This is because they fail to appropriately plan against unforeseen contingencies. Once impressive musicians, movie and sports stars, as well as other celebrities in their heydays, their end become deplorable. The creative industry has recorded many instances where some veteran celebrities have taken to TV and other media platforms to seek financial assistance for their medical needs. Investment banker, who is also the MD for Echo Capital, Della Agbo, gives some explanation. When they start working, they tend not to think about old age. Uh, in everything we do, we all have to understand that uh, whether we like it or not, someday we will retire. Uh, someday you will not be doing what you are currently doing. So we need to start planning from day one. But unfortunately, when most of these celebrities, most of an average Ghanaian worker start working, retirement is usually last, if not none, uh, on their list. So they work so hard and then they retire broke. Then they start expecting people to take care of them. We need to educate ourselves to understand that whatever you make today or whatever you are doing today, tomorrow you will no longer be doing that. Old age will come. A lot of people don't think about that. That is why even in Ghana, I always make fun of this, that a lot of people tend to change their date of birth when it's, almost, when it's getting close to retirement, but they are not ready. When you are ready and you are getting close to retirement, you are happy to go on retirement. A lot of people give the excuse that because they are not making enough to invest. You don't need to make enough to invest because a lot of people are not making enough, but they pay their 10% tithes to churches, correct? Do they go to the church and say, oh, I've been paying 10% tithes to you for the, next, for the last 10 years, so give it back to me? Of course not. So why can't you also pay 10% into an investment account for your old age? And on that note, we wrap up this afternoon's edition of the Market Please. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Manuel Apoichi.